Greetings, adventurers. I'm Ducky, and welcome to the Moldy Sewer Tavern. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, I wanted to talk about mechanical features that make Pathfinder 2E unique. It took me a while to kind of narrow down what I wanted to talk about, but I found seven different things that I think stand out in comparison to Dungeons and Dragons or maybe even other fantasy role-playing games. So the first mechanic that I want to talk about is the three action economy found within Pathfinder. And I'm sure you're wondering how is that different from a game such as Dungeons and Dragons? And I would say it's vastly different because it affects the world around you. It's not just within combat scenarios that you find yourself using this three action economy you're able to utilize it throughout role-playing uh, scenarios that your GM may have you utilize and, and partake in. Um, and it's not just for you as a player, it's for your party as well. And it's really, really fascinating because it, it produces a cause and effect to um, the world that you're in. And it's really, really enjoy enjoyable and very, very different. You just have to experience it to know what I'm talking about. Small content creators like myself rely on viewers like you. And I would greatly appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe button down below, as well as the bell notification icon so you get notified whenever I upload new content. And I'm gonna try to make that a more regular basis. I am just currently graduated from college with my bachelor's degree and attempting to find a career and also trying not to lose it mentally. And I would love it if you followed me on my journey and helped me out any way you can. Uh, so please do that for me and join me on my journey. Thanks. And also, um, one more thing. Check out my other videos. I'll link a playlist up here on Pathfinder videos that you might be interested in. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next mechanic. So this next mechanic ties in with the three action economy and it's the multi-attack penalty. So when you're in combat, uh, if you take your first attack, it's free. If you take a second attack, you take it at a minus five penalty. And then if you take a third attack with your third action, it's a minus 10 to your roll. So it makes it a little bit more difficult, but also realistic. And it scales with your attack bonuses as well as the enemies, AC, and it just makes it feel a little bit more of a challenge. Um, but you don't necessarily have to utilize all three actions in a row as far as attacking because our next mechanic kind of also ties in well maybe the next few um yeah because you can utilize those instead of just attacking so the third mechanic is kind of like a two in one. It's skills and feats uh, because I feel like they go together. And um, you can utilize them or they are there 
so you can utilize them instead of attacking. Like, the skills aren't just skills to, like, jump over a rock or hide behind a tree or things like that. Like, how I feel they are in Dungeons and Dragons. I feel like they're a little bit more creative um, in the way that they're built in Pathfinder. And they just make it more interesting. They really do. This is what it boils down to, for me at least. And um, feats especially, because you get ancestry feats, you get skill feats, and then you get uh, class feats as well. Sorry, I was blinking on the name. <laughs> so you get tons of things that help you within and outside of combat uh, that is not just attacking. And this is especially beneficial if you're a spellcaster, because most spells are two actions. I'll get to that in a different video when I go over magical casting and spells, um, but it's really, really beneficial for spellcasters. Now, the next two mechanics I'll kind of smush together. The first one is Ancestry Ability Flaws. So let's say, for example, in character creation, you choose a dwarf. Well, their ability flaw is to Charisma. So this kind of helps you build your character's personality and background um, a little bit better, uh, but it also is kind of like a permanent disadvantage that you may have uh, right from the get-go, which I think makes it so much more in-depth because they don't have that mechanic in Dungeons and & Dragons, and it feels very stale to me in in that game. And this is where I think Pathfinder really shines because it gives you a little bit of a boost to your character, even though it's working against you. And then the second mechanic of this section is called the optional voluntary flaw where you can actually, instead of just one ancestry flaw, you can opt in for a second one. <laughs> um, and there's mechanics that help you balance it out because you get uh, an additional free ability boost. It doesn't just kind of leave you in the dust. Um, and a lot of people like to apply this to goblins specifically, um, especially if you are the charhide goblin that essentially is fire resistant. Uh, they usually uh, have their goblin set everything on fire by either will or accident. Um, or they choose the unbreakable goblin and they make them super clumsy uh, or just kind of off the rocker. Um, so it just makes it more fun. <laughs> this, this mechanic really is just there for entertainment. Um, but I think they go together because you can, you can opt in to the worst flaw <laughs> uh, for your character. And you try it out. That's all I have to say. And it might be really, really entertaining for you. Now, the second to last mechanic that I'm choosing to mention is armor class. And you're going to say, Ducky, this mechanic is probably in every RPG game. <laughs> Which, yes... But I feel like it utilizes the mechanic a little bit more thoroughly 
in Pathfinder because when you're in combat up against an enemy, it feels like you're not overpowered like you are in Dungeons and Dragons. And I like that because whenever I play a campaign in Dungeons and Dragons game settings with their mechanics, I feel like it's too easy. Um, and then I get bored. In Pathfinder, I feel like it's more of a challenge and I'm invested in the game and I have something that I could lose, which is my character. Um, yeah, so eight armor class is a huge one, I think. And an honorable mention is also in Pathfinder, there's no multi-classing. We'll talk about that in another video. Now, the final mechanic, and you're probably going to ask why I feel this is a mechanic, but I'll explain, is the lore built within Pathfinder. And I'll preface it with this. The lore within Dungeons and Dragons is muddy. And it's too much. Like, there's too many alternate universes that are kind of smushed into one timeline i feel like and in pathfinder it's a very long history of the world of galarian and it's very fleshed out but you're able to make it your own. You don't have to necessarily follow the exact lore that Pathfinder provides, but it is built into the entire system. And it makes it a nice kicking off place for new game masters as well as experienced game masters. Because creating a campaign is a lot of work. It's it's hard. And I feel like this mechanic helps a lot. And yes, there's adventure paths that are kind of like the small storyline adventure campaigns that have a, a short storyline that you can use like kind of like a one shot or a multi-series um but it doesn't compare to the entire lore that pathfinder has within it and it's amazing i'll do lore videos um i gotta do a lot of uh, refreshing my memory because it is pretty intense i feel i love it though and i hope you partake and enjoy it as well and uh yeah let me know what you guys think if you've experienced any of these within pathfinder already or if you're a new player and have questions comment down below so that wraps up our um, unique Pathfinder Mechanics. And thank you for joining me on this journey. And stay tuned for my next video. We'll see you next time. Good luck on your adventure.